Wound healing can occur by regeneration or fibrosis. With fibrosis, we're going to get the formation of granulation tissue and fibrotic scar tissue that acts as a patch. It can seal over the damaged area. With regeneration, we get regeneration of the damaged tissues because what happens in regeneration is there is mitosis of adjacent cells that then migrate to heal the damaged tissue. So in regeneration, the tissues are replaced as they were before the injury. There's replacement of the tissues rather than scar tissue formation. And sometimes there's a bit of both. There can be some regeneration with some fibrosis. So how do the various tissues of the body do in regards to their ability to regenerate? In their ability to undergo mitotic regeneration of adjacent, adjacent healthy cells and migration of those cells. Well, the epidermis is a very good regenerator. So as long as you've got preserved epidermis, then you can get regeneration of the epidermis without scar tissue formation. So epidermal cells can regenerate really quite well. And perhaps the absolutely best healing tissue in the body, what do you think it is? What do you think is probably the best healing tissue in the body? It takes a long time, but it doesn't half make a good job of it, usually. Well, it's bone. Bone heals absolutely superbly. If someone breaks a bone after a previous fracture, then it normally doesn't occur at the same fracture line as the previous fracture, because it heals very, very completely. Now, it can take a long time, but you get excellent, excellent healing in bone by regeneration and reorganization of the structure of the tissues. And another very good regenerator is the liver. The hepatocytes are capable of ongoing mitosis throughout life. So you can have quite a significant liver injury. For example, someone might drink an awful lot of alcohol or they might suffer from viral hepatitis, but the liver can regenerate to replace the damaged cells, to replace the damaged tissues. It can regenerate very well. So even if someone's drank for quite a few years, as long as they stop, the liver cells can recover. Or after a bout of viral hepatitis, the liver cells can recover very well. Now, occasionally people can get severe complications or even death from fulminating hepatitis, but the liver does regenerate very well. What it's not very good at is, is tolerating chronic insults. So if someone has hepatitis C virus over 20 or 30 years, or drinks alcohol over many years, then eventually the liver cells will be replaced by fibrous scar tissue in the process called cirrhosis, and that can lead to liver failure. But short-term insults, the liver is a very, very good regenerator. Now what about the kidneys? Well, if there's an episode of something like acute tubular necrosis or a rhabdomyolysis, where there's damage to the endothelial cells lining the nephrons, they can undergo mitotic regeneration and it can heal completely. So damages to the renal tubule epithelium can heal very well. But if this is destruction of a glomerulus or destruction of a whole nephron that doesn't regenerate, you can't get the reorganization of these complex structures and that can result in fibrous scar tissue formation. So the individual cells in the kidney can mitotically regenerate quite well, whole structures do not. And the situation in the lungs is somewhat similar. For example, if you get an insult to the alveoli, the alveolar cells can regenerate quite well, providing the basement membrane is reasonably intact, the cells can divide. But if the basement membrane is damaged, if the whole alveoli is lost, then it's very difficult for the, well, it can't regenerate. You, you lose the lung structure, and again, you can get pulmonary fibrosis as a result of that. And it's much the same with the cells lining the respiratory passages. The individual cells can regenerate quite well from acute insults, but if there's an ongoing insult, they can't keep on regenerating forever. So, for example, in chronic bronchitis, you can get fibrosis of the smaller airways. Or if someone smokes, you can get a metaplasia, a squamous metaplasia in the respiratory mucosa that doesn't regenerate. So acute injuries, yes, the epidermal cells, the endothelial cells comprising the 
endothelial layer of the bronchial passages can regenerate but if whole structures are damaged they don't regenerate very well well they don't really regenerate um, muscles well muscle cells actually don't undergo much mitosis at all in adult life so if there's damage to a muscle the actual cells won't mitotically regenerate now adjacent cells can hypertrophy to restore the strength of the muscle somewhat but the individual cells don't mitotically regenerate unfortunately and that's particularly true if there's a myocardial infarction and the myocardial cells die there'll be granulation and fibrosis but unfortunately there won't be regeneration of the myocardial cells and that means you can lose a degree of contractility because the fibrous tissue won't contract in the way that the myocardial muscle cells will all the fibrous tissue will do is form a patch to stop the heart from leaking now the nervous system is another interesting example of something that doesn't regenerate very well now when a child is born they've probably got something like 70 percent of their nerve cells already divided and over the first few years of life there's going to be some more division of neurons in the brain and central nervous system but after that in adult life most thinking or most thinkers in this field say there's not significant ongoing mitosis certainly of the cortical cells on the outside of the brain so once nerve cells are damaged that they don't essentially don't mitotically regenerate now there can be restoration of function after neurological injury like stroke or head injury because the nervous system can exhibit something called plasticity this means that other areas of the brain can take over the damaged function so you can get some regeneration but it's often not complete and it's not caused by mitosis and regeneration of the tissues if the central nervous system is damaged you get a process called gliosis the glial cells which support the neurons in the central nervous system are capable of cell division and they divide forming what is essentially the scar of the nervous system a, a, gli a gliosis process peripheral nerves well they can regenerate the axons do regenerate very slowly round about the rate of a millimeter a month so sometimes if someone cuts a nerve that goes into their thumb for example the feeling and function can come back but it can actually take quite a few years for the axons to grow back in after they've been damaged so different tissues of the body have different powers of regeneration after injury the ones that don't regenerate well are forced to heal by the default process which is fibrosis and scar tissue formation